Ah, Amma's able to fancy just walking around in this water ring, despite the fact that I could not swim on this particular segment because it's still shallow, so as a result, there's no way we can able to actually just uh, accept this fact, so... Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Maxi here once again, and I am back for yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Super Mario 3D All-Stars while we play through Super Luigi Galaxy for the Nintendo Switch. So, I believe last time we have managed able to, well, beat the likes out of the forms of Mega Leg for the final time for this entire playthrough, and as a result, we still managed able to collect some more Power Stars, in addition to the Prankster Comet Power Stars, and also we did manage to able to realize that we've actually recovered the second Grand Star for Luigi. So as a result, and also we did manage to able to actually start to explore, uh, you know, the beginning portion of the Fountain Dome, and as a result, we did that pretty nicely done, for all things considered. So today, for this video, is the fact that we're about to be able to still continue things on in terms of the forms of the Fountain Dome, and maybe eventually we can also decide to able to actually just to tackle through the third dome as well. Such as, of course, the Kitchen Dome. So, as a result, yeah, we can pretty much guarantee we can able to actually just to able to accomplish certain missions like so. But either way, though, hopefully I should probably be able to do this within a quick second flat. Well, it's hard to explain, really, because it has been about, well, I would say for about two days ago since we actually last played this game, basically. So, as a result of that kind of stuff, though, I honestly have no words to able to explain about this, personally. Well, apart from the fact that, well, relatively speaking, until by that time, until tomorrow, that uh, eventually Tiona will be able to actually finish up everything for the sake of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX, before we move on to the forms of other Zelda Let's Plays in the future. So as a result, yeah, it should be a little bit more interesting, all things considered. And um, on top of all that stuff, though, there are quite a few discussions I would like to point things out, despite the fact that I just somehow managed to able to go on a bit of a knockback with that particular uh, mini Goomba over there, but that's okay, because we've already still managed able to pull off this nice little shortcut, so that way I can able to actually skip certain portions of this entire 2D section, so... But, uh, you know, you get the idea about that. And, um, also another thing I would like to say is the fact that, uh, also during that time is the fact that until tomorrow, after this video has been released, my Little Pony, the movie, 2017, is going to be become 5 years old until tomorrow. So either way though, I honestly cannot wait until I'm able to actually celebrate the film for its 5th uh, anniversary for that release date. So because of that though, let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day. Well, only for the brownies out there, because as far as non-brownies non as far as this is concerned, uh, it will not count. It will be strictly onto Brony community um, only. So as a result, yeah. Uh, let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day. Are you guys are about to be able to, or certain Bronies out there, are about to be able to celebrate the 5th year anniversary of the release of My Little Pony the Movie 2017? Because I will surely do, especially noticeable, I'm also able to watch the film uh, tomorrow, actually, for the sake of the forms of trying to running onto my PlayStation 4 for the Blu-ray mode. So because of that, though, just to be able to enjoy the film time and time again, but on HD quality and stuff like that. So because of that, though, well, I can obviously able to actually save that uh, conversation until when it gets to the point until... Uh, potentially speaking, this Friday, if I'd like to be able to give my another thoughts after the, uh, you know, the five-year anniversary of the release of the film, so, at least, in, in my honest opinion, though, one of the greatest films in terms of 2017, I think it is still a lot better than the films of how it does it on Emoji Movie, that's for sure, because obviously the Emoji Movie still sucks, so, either way, though, that's saying that right now, so... Anyway, and also, as far as you probably already know, since the fact that one of those Nintendo Switch games came out in 2018, also got itself its um, anniversary treatment as well. Specifically, Super Mario Party, which, yes, I can't even believe Super Mario Party did match to able to came out for about four years ago now, ever since on the 5th of October in 2018. Well, 
It might be seems a little bit harder to get back into that game every now and then because most people seem to prefer uh, Mario Party Superstars right now just because of the forms of the classic nostalgic mini games and also much more detailed boards and on top of all that stuff though with multiple control types which is understandably so because uh, I know for the fact that whatever I look back on Super Mario Party actually that uh, some people complain about the fact that you have to be able to utilize the, con uh, the Joy-Con controllers at all times, nor to able to actually play the game, which is understandably so, because there are a few times that most people seem to be able to come across into a lot of uh, Joy-Con drifting every now and then, which is kind of a problematic back then. Well, I don't have that much issues with that so far still, especially noticeable because, well, relatively speaking though, that, uh, well, I rarely managed to be able to guard no issues for the sake of Joy-Con drifting, so... But I digress. So, um, as far as anything else, for the sake of the forms of looking back on, uh, Super Mario Party as a result, um, I do have some, uh, uh, you know, positives about, uh, positives about the game after four years since when it first came out. Uh, the minigames are actually very, very dang good. Even especially noticeable, they heavily utilize the forms of the Joy-Con controllers for the majority of every single portions of the game. For its, uh, you know, motion sensing and also motion controls, and even in some cases though with how you, about the fact that it kind of reminds me like I was playing, well you know what I mean, Mario Party 8 for its motion controls again, except obviously we're not going to be taking control of Wii Remote, so instead we have to be able to take control of the forms of the Joy-Con controllers, either horizontally for its entire gameplay, and even in some cases vertical uh, position due to some mini games. So, and um, also I really love the actual uh, the graphics of the game still. Although despite the actual most of these themes are actually based off from the likes of the newer Mario games ever since the new Super Mario Bros. style, but honestly it doesn't bother me too much though because obviously the textures looks a lot more amazing. Even especially noticeable because in comparison to the forms of how it does it on, uh, well, let's just say Mario Party Star Rush and especially noticeable with uh, the top 100 essentially, that's uh, Although it's nice, all in all, but uh, it does have some bit of rough around the edges in terms of, like, the actual, um, the edges and stuff like that. Well, I don't know what I usually explain about this for the sake of time, because it has been a very long while since I actually last played, uh, well, you know what I mean, certain Mario Party games on the 3DS, because, well, obviously we are still moving on to Mario Party Superstars, so... And in fact, that relatively speaking, speaking of Mario Party Superstars, um, by that time until specifically this particular weekend, that uh, both Pac-Man and Pinkie Pie are about to be moving on to the second board, which appears to be based off of Mario Party 2, which appears to be buddy forms of Spaceland. So, speaking of space, we are going to be playing through, uh, well, space-related games, which are... Well, let's just say, uh, the entirety of everything for the sake of Super Mario Galaxy slash Super Luigi Galaxy. And in one of those boards, as we, as I said this before, it was not going to happen until specifically, uh, Saturday and Sunday for the sake of the 8th of October all the way up to the 9th of October. That's, uh, basically, that's, uh, you know, as I said, both Pac-Man and Pinkie Pie are both tackling through the Spaceland together, so to make sure they'll have some fun together for the sake of the forms of this amazing board. Well, at least for some people anyway though, so uh... Anyway, and um, yeah, and also I do manage to be able to, uh, well I do really love the actual character roster for the sake of the forms of, you know, Super Mario Party, because that actually has the most character roster in the entirety of the game series so far. Because despite how Superstars managed able to downgrade the actual, uh, the character roster, mainly because of the forms of nostalgia basis to it though, but as a result, it doesn't bother me too much though, because after all, you've got Donkey Kong and Birdo and Long Last for the sake of the forms of the compilation Mario Party game, which is always swell. Because, uh, relatively speaking, in, uh, in uh, Super Mario Party, you do get gem-packed with all these uh, specific characters based off from the good guys and the bad guys by simply able to actually select whatever characters you're selecting. So, like, you know, I still managed to able to remember that day whenever when that game first announced back in, uh, 
2018, I was very shocked to see some of those uh, character roster has been, you know, gigantic and expansive than ever before. Like, usually for roughly around 20 playable characters, which is quite a lot. This is mainly because of the forms that they are able to actually uh, introduce into ourselves the uh, the partner party uh, mode, where basically... Oh, and also say so applies to those, uh, the ally system as well, returning from Star Wars, essentially. So, either way, though, that's... Um, yeah, I can totally see why that was a thing, so, uh, and also that, uh, although it does have some issues, though, for the sake of the forms of Super Mario Party, in comparison to the forms of how it does on the, uh, the superior Mario Party Superstars on the Nintendo Switch, is the fact that I will have to admit, though, is that the board layout was fine, it's just the fact that it's a little bit tad small, and also has the smallest amount, for the sake of the forms of the majority of the boards of the game. Because in Super Mario Party, it only has like four boards, at least technically if you want to count um, another four, well despite they are basically the exactly the same theme. So I'm usually going to count as four within uh, both Mario Party mode and Partner Party mode, because as a result they basically share the exact same theme. The only difference is being is of course the different names of the board, so yeah it's a little bit uh, small and a little bit lackluster in comparison. but. Thankfully, and you know, Mario Party Superstars do manage to be able to bring back the classic boards, which is, well, fantastic and awesome at the same time, which, as far as I can usually tell by this point, even though I'm sure that both Pac-Man and Pinkie Pie have already mentioned about that specific, uh, topic ever since you joined a course of in, uh, well, specifically on Saturday and stuff like that, and even especially no spawn on Sunday as well, so, yeah, you probably get the gist of it, so... Anyway, so let's meet up with Bowser for the first time for Luigi for the sake of the forms of the 3D All-Stars version. So, uh, and as a result, I somehow managed to meet up with him very fast because, of course, you know what I mean. Luigi's long jump and stuff like that, it is so, so spectacular with all that, you know, speedrun tactics and stuff like that. Well, I don't necessarily try to use that much speedrun tactics at this point because... Obviously, I don't want to able to be in a risk assessment, or in some cases, though, in the riskiest moves if possible, so... But I digress. Oh, speaking of Mario Party Superstars, potentially speaking, is the fact that... Actually, I'll get to more in a second, because... Either way, though, let's get into the forms of in the first Bowser battle, which, again, if you ever played the Mario's playthrough before, and especially noticeable with the, the original Wii version as a result, basically, though, you still need able to actually just to dodge his attacks, and on top of all that stuff, though, as soon as he jumps way higher, basically, though, is the fact that you can have to able to be sure you need to let him stomp onto these, uh, these light blue uh, spots, as you can tell, from the entire planet we're actually onto right now. And because of that, though, you just want to able to let his uh, tail get uh, burning flames and stuff like that, and then just try to able to perform a spin attack at him for about quite a few times, potentially. So, yeah, it's nothing different from the Mario's playthrough, that's for sure, except the fact that you play as a different character. So, yeah, I guess that makes it totally obvious sense. So, but even then, though, as I said before, ever since and during the course of on Monday, though, is the fact that we're going onto the Sonic Heroes territory where, you know what I mean, you go for the exact same levels and the exact same missions with the exact same time. So, because of that, though, yeah, it's kind of similar to the forms of how it does it on uh, Sonic Heroes, and especially noticeable with the forms of, I would say, another one of those games that has, like, uh, going for the exact same levels routine or something like that. Mind you, I haven't exactly think about it on the top of my head, actually, because... Well, relatively speaking, though, as far as you can guys can clearly notice from the start, though, is the fact that, well... Honestly, I've managed to be able to be busy quite, uh, quite a lot for the past few days. Most notably, I've recently managed to be able to just, well, almost try to complete it. Uh, Team Kirby Clash Deluxe, thanks to forms of that particular trick system for... You know, the microtransactions, e shop reader stuff onto the Switch and then just emerge it with the 3DS system with it. Because unfortunately though, I don't have any luck for able to actually do that on my Wii U because I totally forgot about the Wii U. Well, I still find the system to be still underrated for the Wii U system itself, but it's just the fact that it's been 
you know, donkey's years since I actually last set up when it comes to the Nintendo Network ID for the Wii U system, so... Anyway, so we now actually access to the kitchen dome, because after all, we beat Bowser for the first time with Luigi, so, uh, but hopefully we'll meet up with him again until on the bedroom dome, so, uh... Yeah, not much else to explain about this. And also, we've managed able to receive the third Grand Star. So, in this case, we've only got four more Grand Stars to go for Luigi. And as a result, we can definitely able to actually guarantee that we will able to fire up the, uh... Well, you know what I mean, the Comet Observatory for the, uh, the second time for the entire, uh, Super Mario 3D All-Stars compilation. So... Anyway, so let's just go and get started with, uh, or let's just continue on, actually. So it's, let's just go and get into the forms of the Beach Ball Galaxy right here. Just in case for its, uh, you know, the actual correct order for the sake of the forms of certain levels throughout. So, uh, I guess that makes it pretty obvious for the sake of time. Oh, and also another thing as well is the fact that I honestly uh, do apologize with the forms of some commentary gets a little bit too stilted at points. That's only mainly because, once again, that uh, my laptop keeps lacking, which is especially noticeable if I was trying to capture things on footage for, you know, 1080p and stuff like that, and it just, it just interrupts my progressioning for the sake of the forms of, uh, well, you know what I mean, it's just the fact that it's so irritating, especially noticeable if you really, really want to be able to try to cope with the lack of, uh, well, the amount of lag, and especially noticeable if the amount of slowdown as well. Although, thankfully, in during the capture footage or something like that, uh, thankfully though, it does not able to actually affect the actual gameplay, it's just, well, the actual preview window, when I was doing, uh, the commentary and stuff like that, it just managed to ruin the flow for me, but either way though, I will try to fix that at some point until specifically this Friday, so uh, don't worry, we'll, we'll get around to that though, so. Anyway, um, another thing I would like to mention is the fact that we've only got about 15 more days to go until specifically Mario Plus Rapid Sparks of Hope for the Nintendo Switch will be releasing. So I'm still excited for it, and especially noticeable about the fact that, well, relatively speaking, that, uh, well, we're actually getting quite close to the actual excitement for the sake of the forms of, well, basically pretty much everything. So in this case, though, there's not much else to say about this here, so... Oh, and another thing too is the fact that speaking of Mario Party Superstars, as far as I've s uh, no way, actually it's the forms of Star Rush actually, that, uh, relatively speaking, uh, Mario Party Star Rush, until specifically in the UK version, until two days time, uh, that game will be, be eventually become, um, six years old, so, yeah, gee, time flies, doesn't it? And especially noticeable until when it gets to the point until next month, until the 10th of November, that uh, Mario Party The Top 100, the precursor to, uh, you know, Mario Party Superstars, that uh, basically does the fact that The Top 100 will eventually become uh, five years old, despite most people seem to don't care about the forms of The Top 100 anymore, because obviously the Superstars game is basically the more superior version of the two, so... Because, you know, it makes sense, because, you know, uh, play the game on handheld mode, anywhere you go, and also you can able to finally play online play, and, um, also just, uh, play the game on couch play for the sake of the forms of multiplayer action for its local play, and, uh, everything else you might expect at that point, so... And also, not long now, until specifically that Sonic Frontiers is about to be getting closer to its release. So, either way though, I'm still very excited for this. Even though some people, more some fans, might actually have sales and bit of conf- Uh, well, conf- Uh, well, I can't really speak today for this point, guys. Because I was going to try to say something for this point. Of oh, controversial. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Because I have no idea why I haven't said that word for quite some time. Because especially noticeable that the last time I say that word was actually back in, uh, what if I discussed upon the forms of both Mario Party 9 and Mario Party 10, essentially. So, either way, though, I have honestly have, have to admit it the right away, because, as I said before, it's been quite a few days since I actually last get back into this commentary, so... 
Anyway, so we've got ourselves the gold shell by able to actually pass for the swim test. And, uh, yeah, pretty simple and easy when you get the, the hang of it. So, nicely done. So, um, oh, and another thing as well is the fact that until about also during a month later is the fact that, uh, both Paper Mario Sticker Star alongside with, with the forms of, uh, you know, the Wii U itself in addition to, uh, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed and even Epic Mickey 2, The Power of 2, uh, basically though, those few things are eventually gonna be become, uh, 10, um, 10 years old, so... Well, specifically when it gets to the point until, like, um, I would say on the 11th of November in, uh, this year specifically, that, uh, Paper Mario Sticker Star will eventually become a decade old, despite the fact that for Paper Mario fans really hated this game when it, uh, you know, when it came out. Including, maybe me? That's only mainly because I'm still pretty much used to with, uh, Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64, alongside with the Thousand Year Door, because... You know what I mean, both of those games, uh, back in the day that is, are pure gold when it comes to likely for Paper Mario franchise. And especially noticeable with a silver medal, uh, claim for, uh, you know what I mean, Super Paper Mario. Despite it's a bit, uh, uh, weird for its gameplay, but it doesn't bother me too much though, I must admit. But, um, as a result, when it comes to forms of Sticker Star as a result though, yeah, I can totally see why a lot of people seem to have a lot of negativity about it. Especially noticeable because the game itself is a bit frustrating to complete. Especially noticeable, don't even get me started on the Dragon Final Boss Battle because... I just cannot for the life of me can never actually go through the final boss segment for the sake of the forms of this entire game. And that's why that I don't know if I can able to do that let's play of um, Paper Mario Sticker Story personally because although despite the fact that it does have a file selection screen, but um I definitely know for the fact that it's a bit uh, tedious to go through. And same applies to the forms of maybe a tad bit for uh let's just say uh color splash essentially. Because obviously it does have a lot of uh, pacing issues for the sake of the forms of uh, color splash. And uh, maybe potentially the Origami King, but uh, I think trying to able to 100% that game is a bit of a pain as well. Although I don't mind the, o the Origami King, but it's not the best Paper Mario game out there. I'm going to say this right now, because obviously both, you know... Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64, along with the Thousand Year Door on the GameCube, the oh, these are pure gold. So, anyway, um, oh yeah, I also, I also should probably mention about this actually, in regards to the forms of one of those, um, PlayStation 2 games, or the Xbox game, or the PC game, or even the Game Boy Advance game out there, that I suppose I should probably mention about this actually, is the fact that one of those racing games, uh, potentially speaking, that it will eventually become two decades old during that time, which the game I'm talking about, which I somehow mentioned about that specific hint, uh, usually came out on the PlayStation 2, Xbox, PC, alongside with the Game Boy Advance. Yes, I will refer it to as Ant's Extreme Racing, so yeah, I can't believe that particular card racing game based on the Ant movie as a DreamWorks animation movie, uh, has eventually become, well, two decades old recently, for the sake of the forms of 2022. Which I honestly forgot about that, uh, uh, honestly. Just because I'm still pretty much used to watching the Ants movie, just because, obviously for my nostalgia reasons, but, uh, that's besides the point, so... Anyway, so let's just go ahead and get started with the actual, uh, the Cyclone stone planet right here, so we can pretty much guarantee that we can able to just, well, do the usual shortcuts method by, you know what I mean, some, you know, pulling out some cool stunts like I just did right there, so, at least for the most part it's pretty easy to deal with right here, but as far as fast foe uh, comments until later on though, it gets a bit tough in certain parts, but either way though, it might not be too difficult as far as I'm usually concerned with that stuff, so... Oh yeah, as far as what Tiona, she already mentioned about this, ever since and during the course of in, uh, well, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, uh, DX, uh, Let's Play. Uh, basically though, is the fact that, uh, obviously Cap King 74 he's, uh, basically finished up with the, uh, a fan-made game from the likes of the GameCube emulator called, uh, Pikmin 251, and, uh, 
he really did enjoy that. Although I'm not exactly sure if I'm also doing a let's play of that game personally, because I think relatively speaking, speaking for itself, I'm basically still Pikmin out, as far as I've already mentioned about this several times already, just because, not only because of how the fact that, you know, giving up on the forms of some hype about Pikmin 4, but also with the forms of, uh, I'm not very great at these games. Well, apart from the fact that there's only one in particular game I was good at, which is, ironically, which appears to be Hey Pikmin on the 3DS. But aside from that, that's the only game I was good at. But aside from all that stuff though, despite the fact that it just gives me a lot of hand cramps after I finish the game 100% completely, so... I know it seems a bit redundant by saying this because, well, as I said before, and especially noticeable when Tiana also mentions about that, that we basically decided able to move on to the different franchises I was lo uh, looking forward to for playing in terms of fan-based fan services or something like that, which appears to be, of course, Mario and Sonic, The Legend of Zelda, Kirby games, Metroid games, and especially noticeable with uh, maybe a tad bit of Pokemon, well, despite the fact that I'm not a massive fan of Pokemon, but regardless of such though, I did have some uh, good items here and there in terms of Pokemon related stuff for its uh, Pokemon anime films, and especially noticeable with uh, uh, certain spin offs for uh, Poke Park uh, duology games, and even though I still managed to go myself uh, Pokemon Tournament DX, mainly because of the forms of the Celebi DLC I've managed to go with me, so. Anyway! So now we've actually uh, went through the first segment, let's go ahead and deal with this uh, breaking the shortcut thing again, but this time with Luigi. So in this case though, succeed and oh goodness gracious, I almost fell into that poison swamp, but that's okay. Because obviously the pull off, uh, you know, that massive shortcut, success. Well I don't know usually I usually say this right, because well... Again, like I said before, it's been two days ago since I actually last played this though, because, well, not only because of all the fact that I just want to able to point things out that, uh, it's just the fact that the entire process of this recording session is a bit, a tad bit more tedious, especially noticeable because of the forms of the preview, uh, uh, window when it comes to, as I said before, Doing commentary and stuff like that is a lot more laggy and stuff like that, which is always so inconsistent. But regards of such though, I think it'll be still fine as it goes by, so... Alright, so we've met again for the sake of the forms of the Fast Foe uh, Comet Challenges. So in this case though, we can pretty much guarantee we can able to do one of the two missions, so... Hopefully, we should be able to actually do this mission no problem again, but this time around though, playing as Luigi of all things, so... Ah, oh, dang it, I somehow failed this particular shortcut. Oh well, no big deal, so we'll just try again. I still really wish it felt the fact that I have to use the analog stick for able to select certain menus throughout, but um, unfortunately though, I still need to be able to point the, uh, the sensor uh, cursor sensor onto those specific menu commands. Although, thankfully though on the Switch version though, is the fact that you can able to press the R button to able to recalibrate the, uh, you know, just trying to able to center your, uh, your, you know, the actual star pointer. So, yeah, that basically as far as I can usually think about it, so. Oh yeah, speaking of the actual star pointer, as far as I'm concerned, I still even remember back in the day, where basically when, uh, Super Mario Galaxy was first revealed, uh, back in E3 2006, alongside with the launch of the Nintendo Wii, or something like that, that, uh, basically does the fact that I do remember the fact that the star pointer color is actually a lot different in comparison to the final version of the game, which is to be more specifically because I think this star pointer on the E3 version is all yellow, whilst compared to the final version, it's all blue, so... To go alongside with the forms of the player's color for the sake of the forms of the 2000s era, for the sake of the forms of the Wii era, for the sake of the forms of the color coordinated uh, player colors. So like, obviously player 1 is for blue, and then player 2 is for uh, red, and I believe player 3 is uh, green, and then player 4 is uh, yellow, I'm presuming so anyway, so... Anyways, let's head over onto... Oh, there's another Luigi over there, too. So, as a result, yeah, we're 
apparently going on to Ghostly Galaxy from now on because, well, well to be speaking, just like it informs the fact it does in the original version of the game, Basically though, if you play the, uh, this particular first mission as Luigi, you realize about the fact that there's another Luigi over there. Oh yeah, something's worth mentioning actually, is the fact that I suppose that um, it might be seems a little bit more sense than that I think. Relatively speaking, I don't know if I can able to mention about this, but I think I might as well say it anyway. Um, as soon as you get to the point where if you're trying to able to obtain a key, while able to try, uh, trying to able to kill with the forms of the pole star mechanic, well, basically, remember without the particular uh, spike that has usually appeared? That um, you see why into when if we get to that particular key pole star segment for throughout. So, but uh, yeah, I think for the most part, though. Oh, and another thing as well is the fact that speaking of bronies out there, uh, basically though, is the fact that one of those episodes in particular in uh, season eight called uh, Father Knows Best or something like that. That uh, basically though is the fact that that particular episode has been uh, out for about also four years ago, so... Anyway, so let's just go ahead and get onto the forms of that particular segment over there. But first off, let me just go ahead and interact with this, well, clone Luigi, or should I say a twin version of Luigi. And yeah, you see those spikes down there? If you dare touch the actual spiky roof part, that instantly kills you, apparently. Because unlike in uh, certain spike objects, but a sacred the forms of likely, uh, oh, let's just say, uh, you know, in Super Mario Galaxy 2 or something, and uh, maybe potentially this as well, that uh, basically though is the fact that you're able to actually get hit by one health bar, and um, on top of all that stuff that you've been uh, flying everywhere, and then you just, well, you know what I mean. Because I'm presuming that particular instant death spike uh, parts as you saw earlier ago, it's like a throwback to the forms of how it does it on the Corona Mountain level for the sake of Super Mario Sunshine, so... Yeah, it does remind me of that actually, so uh... Anyway, so we've now turned into Boo Luigi, so it looks a bit more... Um, ridiculous as it sounds, but uh, regardless of such though, um... Yeah, we've managed able to reignite with the twin brother of ours. So, yeah, let's receive the actual power star as the forms of the twin brother Luigi. And, uh, we can able to return back onto, you know, the Comet Observatory. So that way we can able to get the idea of what's coming up next. So, in this case though, yeah, nicely done and too easy on my part. So, nice. So, of course, that Rosalina's gonna mention something related to, uh, a twin. So, yeah, I guess that probably explains it, huh? <laughs> and, of course, just like in Mario's playthrough, we do need to able to talk to twin Luigi in order to able to actually watch for, uh, well, some more Power Stars in particular. So, we'll, uh, ask him immediately, and, uh, sure enough, he'll tell us about the fact that we're able to meet again, until whenever we get to the Good Egg Galaxy, so, uh, yeah, that basically summarizes it such, so, uh, yeah, I guess that explains it, so. And something's worth mentioning is the fact that the actual, uh, you know, the color tone between the playable Luigi and the likes of the non-playable Luigi looks incredibly different, so. But either way, though, it knows what it is, I guess, for the sake of the forms of likely for the difference between you know, two different versions of Luigi when it comes to the color tone and everything. That's, uh, you know, you get the idea about that, so... Anyway, so let's head back into the Ghostly Galaxy again and do the next mission. So, uh, in fact, relatively speaking, we can probably be focusing on, uh, the secret mission first. So, uh, we basically know what to expect, so... I think, relatively speaking, I think my, uh, laptop doesn't go completely lagging again, so I think that's a good thing. Especially noticeable, even though it might still have some issues there, but, uh, like I said before, until when it gets to the point until on Friday, then I could potentially try to fix that, so... Anyway, so let's just go ahead and become invincible with all that rainbow star and everything. Although, let's not get hit by ourselves at this point, because we'll just go straight into the forms of, uh, well, to be more specifically, for that particular secret mission as we go. 
And also potentially speaking as well is the fact that, well, I will possibly try my best to able to actually just to do the insane amount of shortcuts for the sake of the forms of trying to able to skip over certain parts like these, so... But, uh, I think relatively speaking though at this point, guys, I think that's as far as I can try to discuss upon the forms of today's discussion, I'm afraid, so, uh... It's just the fact that matter is though, it's just the fact that I just cannot even believe that both of those things do pretty much guarantee almost become to the point where... Oh, okay. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Ah, oh, dang it. I think that Luigi's slippery traction just screwed me up from that... Well, that particular question mark block. Ah, oh, jeez. I think there's going to be quite a few uh, scenarios where basically, if you're not uh, be if you're not careful enough with all that Luigi slippery momentum, then basically though there were a few uh, times that you might able to actually lose a lot of lives for quite some time. So, oh well, no big deal. But at the very least, we got loads of le extra lives thanks to uh, well, you know what I mean with all that uh, finding extra lives and also star bits grinding. And heck, let's not forget ourselves with the forms of that particular uh, certain segments throughout. So. Oh yeah, and also during the forms of that particularly for the sake of the forms of this entire month of October, that I believe we've only got about roughly for about 22 days time until specifically, um, Super Mario Odyssey will eventually become, well, 5 years old as well, so uh, yeah, time flies doesn't it, with all these releases in mind, but uh, I suppose I think, that's a, I think that's as far as I can try to explain about this for the sake of time, so a word also like to mention about did that one up mushroom just clip right through that floor okay that seems a bit odd but uh, anyway so we'll just uh, get through the door and we got ourselves a glorious another power star so nicely done despite the fact that I somehow accidentally come across a death where I accidentally slipped off from that particular question mark block so yeah that's totally my fault Mount of Splatter Mansion, so we've actually got 35 of those Power Stars, and sure enough, we're able to receive a letter for Luigi, so... Yeah, speak for itself, good egg galaxy, so we'll definitely hit in there right now. So, uh, yeah, I guess that makes it totally obvious for the sake of time. Oh yeah, there's also a, a, a mail that I somehow managed to ignore. But basically though, it's the fact that I think I probably might as well mention this anyway. That uh, basically, if you ever receive a letter to Princess Peach from a uh, male toad, uh, even though it does manage to still technically say Dear Mario, but regardless of such though, the rewards you get is basically, well, in a Mario's play for you get 5 lives, and then in Luigi's play for you get 20 lives, which is, you know, quite a lot, all things considered, so uh... Anyway, so we've managed to able to meet up with him again on Good Egg Galaxy. And uh, I managed to did this within no sweat with all that nice little triple jump. And that's all there is to say, so. And of course, as you can tell, I've managed to capture this image because seriously, two Luigis in one is so cool. Even though it kind of reminds me of the forms of Mario Luigi Dream Team Brothers a little bit, just because, well, speaking of which though actually, it's the fact that, um, I don't know about you, but maybe I'm also able to try to able to actually try my best to able to like, well, I don't know what I usually call it that per se, because again, it's been uh, two days ago since I actually last played this, but, uh, well, to be speaking though, is the fact that potentially for the forms of uh, next year, we will definitely try to able to consider this, that uh, we might able to actually see you of Luigi in action for the sake of the 40th anniversary until next year. Well, if God knows if Nintendo's up to something, so... But we'll just see what happens. Alright, so we've managed to feed Hungry Lumber in the earliest stage if possible, because, well... Let's just say that we're actually going to be doing with two Hungry Lumber stages into one video. Regardless, so that's actually pretty something. And I suppose we should probably do one more mission for the sake of this video, even though I I would have liked to able to actually race against with that particular boo uh sprint over there. But um, we'll save that until again until on Friday for the sake of the uh 
Well, the sixth year anniversary of the release of Mario Party Star Rush for the 3DS, so... But despite the fact that I haven't exactly complete everything in that game just yet, mainly because the challenge tower is impossible. And on top of all that stuff though, trying to able to get every single, like, uh, Star Rush emblems, along with the forms of Super Star Rush emblems, is actually kind of impossible in certain boards, so... Like, for example, on, uh, World 1-1, I can never, for the life of me, can never actually get, uh, the Super Star Rush, uh, medal. And same applies for the majority of World 4 boards, for, like, World 4-1, and 4-2, and 4-3, because I seriously keep on getting screwed over by certain board mechanics for, like, the, uh, raising lava for certain, uh, um, segments, and on top of all that stuff, though, with that particular very annoying uh, bullet bill roulette thing ever since in, uh, since in Wall 3, so... Yeah, I guess that probably explains it, so... But I, I would wish if I were, like, able to mention something more related to, like, new stuff for that matter, though, but honestly, guys, I think that's as far as I can try to explain about this, aside from the fact that, well, as you can tell, I'm actually getting a little bit slightly lengthy where it goes to the forms of trying to deal with some eels and stuff, but... Regards as such though, the red shell will obviously help you, because obviously it'll just, you know what I mean, homing on certain enemy encounters, including those eels potentially, so... Anyway, so let's just get ourselves some bit of air, so just in case we don't want to able to waste too much air, because as you probably already know, uh, Luigi's air meter will drain a bit faster if you manage to able to do a spin attack, so... Yeah, just be careful not to able to spin onto that particular... Uh, when you're going underwater, and then be careful not to, like, not only shake your controller, but pressing a Y button so many times. So, anyway, so with that being said, though, I think we should probably end things up at this point right here. So join me next time for more of Let's Play of Super Luigi Galaxy and the Super Mario 3D All-Stars game. It's the fact that we'll still continue things on in the Kitchen Dome and able to get the next Grand Star, and even some more Power Stars, potentially. So I'll see you guys on Friday. Later, fellas.